What's up guys and welcome to Leopard Gecko Genetics 101. What is a chromosome? Very important that you understand in breeding leopard geckos what a chromosome is and how it relates to Mendelian genetics or line bred genetics. And before we even get to Mendelian or line bred genetics, we need to understand what a chromosome is and how do animals actually look differently over time. So the definition of a chromosome is actually in simplicity, it is organized DNA. You can see that right here. And what is DNA? You might have heard it said in Jurassic Park, I think the famous line is, DNA is the building blocks of life, or they say something like that. Just one drop of your blood contains billions of strands of DNA, the building blocks of life. But in general, what it is, is it is genetic instructions or blueprints, right? So if you were going to code programming into a computer, if you were going to build a building, if you were going to design a cafe for people to eat at, there would need to be a set of blueprints which would set into motion the work that needs to be done to accomplish the end goal. So DNA is already a preset set of instructions or blueprints for every living species on the planet, including leopard geckos, that tells the cells within your body what color you are, what patterns you have, what size you will be. And even as they are discovering nowadays certain mental traits or physical traits that you might be inclined towards based on your lineage and based on your historic past. That's very important for leopard geckos as well because we see that domestication or good behavior has been bred into dogs just from us associating with them and breeding them so long in captivity. And now we're seeing the same thing with leopard geckos. So usually when I talk to people and they're like, is a leopard gecko a good pet? I explain to them that they've been domesticated for like 30, 40, 40 years in our hobby and for that reason they are actually a lot calmer of a species now than they used to be in the wild like just plucking a random leopard gecko out the wild it's probably going to be a lot less nice and a lot more hard to handle than a leopard gecko that's been bred in captivity and has been bred with human conditioning generation after generation being held by humans interacted with humans in the human environment that will breed domestication in to those animals. Now I have a nice illustration of a pair of chromosomes here on the right side of the screen. And the reason that a pair is very important is because one of these, so let's show, let's just take this one for example. One of these chromosomes was inherited from mom and one of these chromosomes was inherited from dad, but they string up together to create you, a special and unique creation upon which there is no other on the face of the planet. And so leopard geckos are no different. Now, humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes, just like this. So this, this is a representative pair of chromosomes. Sometimes the size of a chromosome differs a little bit, but I just wanted to use a very standard looking pair right here just to give you the idea of what it looks like. And then leopard geckos have 19 pairs of chromosomes. So 19 from dad, 19 from mom, inherited into each and every single baby. Now, what is a locus point? A locus point is very important on a pair of chromosomes. So a locus point is a location that a gene is found on every chromosome. So every chromosome has multiple locus points. I read thousands of locus points. So this pair of chromosomes right here has thousands of locus points, each locus point contains a segment of DNA because that is what a gene is. So a gene is a segment of DNA. And remember DNA up here is the genetic instructions and blueprints that create you the unique you, the specific you, upon which there is no single replication exactly like you. That's what creates you, and that's the same thing that creates each and every baby little leopard gecko. So, I hope you guys are with me up to this point. You are made up of chromosomes. Leopard geckos are made up of chromosomes. Chromosomes contain your entire genetic code. 
and the possibilities of what you will look like or what the leopard gecko will look like are all contained within DNA, which is contained within chromosomes. Those chromosomes are organized or broken down into locus points. And locus points are segments of those chromosomes upon which a very specific code, coding for a very specific trait on your body or on the gecko's body, is located. Let's take the white and yellow gene, for example. I kind of covered it up a little bit here. A locus point is the combination of the genes from dad and the genes from mom. So on these chromosomes, this is just one locus point right here. Remember, there's thousands of locus points. So there would be another locus point here, 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 here. There are thousands of locus points across these chromosomes but only one locus point is responsible for the white and yellow gene. So the dad over here in blue passed on a normal genetic trait. He did not pass on the white and yellow gene, but mom over here on the right in pink, she passed on the white and yellow gene. So at the locus point of where the white and yellow gene is located, this gecko right here, which you can see right here, the, the top right corner, because this is an example of a white and yellow leopard gecko, inherited one copy from mom, but did not inherit a copy from dad. Now, the normal set of DNA that you're supposed to have as a human or as a leopard gecko, what you're supposed to look like or what your original planned set of DNA was supposed to contain is called a gene. When that gene is mutated, it becomes an allele. And so that's exactly what happened at this locus point. So remember, locus point contains a set of normal DNA. Let's just call it for leopard geckos, wild type DNA. What a leopard gecko looks like in the wild has a certain genetic code. And at this locus point, that genetic code is supposed to be normal. You're not supposed to have white and yellow genetics in the wild, in Afghanistan, in Iraq, in Pakistan. Genetic mutations are usually bad, but as breeders, we take those genetic mutations and we breed them into our animals to attain different looks for animals in the designer realm of designing reptiles. It's the same thing that happened with dogs. Do you think the original dog looked like a pug? If you've ever seen Frank from Men in Black, that's what a pug is. Now that's the worst disguise ever. That guy's definitely an alien. If you don't like it, you can kiss my furry little butt. That is not what dogs look like originally, but to get a Frank, and my name is Frank too, so that's kind of funny. To get a Frank took many, many thousands of years of humans interacting with dogs to create genetic mutations and to align those mutations together to create a specific look in the animal, which would create Frank. But the normal set of DNA, what a dog is supposed to look like, what a human is supposed to look like, what a leopard gecko is supposed to look like is contained within what is called genes, but genes can be mutated or altered to create a different look. Now, what causes mutations? It could be internal errors. You know, your cells are constantly replicating within your body every single day. If a cell codes for something in its replication process as an error or as a mistake, that is one way that a genetic mutation can pop out. Another way that a genetic mutation can pop out is through radiation, chemicals, or viruses, external interactions with your environment. So there are internal interactions that can go on to cause for mutations, and there are external interactions that can go on with your environment that can also cause for mutations. And remember, nine times out of 10, mutations are bad. They're actually not good. So if you are exposed to radiation, that's not good. If you are exposed to chemicals, that's not good. If you're exposed to viruses, that's not good. And those things can alter your DNA in a bad way so that yourself and or your offspring might see negative effects from that. So typically genes or genetic traits are lined up for the strength of the species to survive. And then when mutations come along, it's actually creating an error or a fault within your DNA, and it's actually not meant to be good. 
But as human beings, we take animals, we see those mutations or purposefully create those mutations and then we replicate those mutations because we want to see orange geckos, black geckos, yellow geckos, striped geckos, zigzag designed geckos, spotted geckos, no spotted geckos. It's just the art of life. It is the art of using mutations in animals to change and alter permanently the look of that lineage of animals. Now, I did a little bit of research and there are over 24,000 genes inside of a leopard gecko. Think of that for a second. The white and yellow gene, or I should say the white and yellow area of DNA that is coding, it, sh it shouldn't be coding for white and yellow, but when an error occurs, it can make it into white and yellow. And that's what the white and yellow gene is. There's 24,000 of those in a gecko's DNA. So so think of all the, the known genes that we have in leopard geckos. We have albino, we have white and yellow, we have max snow, we have eclipse, we have Enigma, we have lemon frost, we have three kinds of albino, I should mention, because all three of those albinos are located on different locus points, which we will get to in the future series of this video. We have NDBE, we have Cypher now, and you get the point. The list goes on and on. Um, there might have been a few major genes that I forgot to mention there, but just kind of spitballing what's on the top of my head. At this time, we are not going to reference Tangerine, Black Knight, Bold Stripe, Halloween Mask, Bandit. We're not gonna reference those things because those are line bred and they deserve their own video but I'll call it simple mutations. Those are complex mutations. Simple mutations, which we will talk about in the next video, are that list that I talk about. Albino, Max No, Cypher, NDBE, White and Yellow. Those are simple mutations that are contained only at one locus point. One locus point out of the 24,000 genes that exist in leopard geckos and the thousands of locus points that exist in leopard geckos, only one of those locus points is responsible for the white and yellow gene. Once you get into line breeding, multiple locus points become involved. And we will talk about that in the next video. But for this video, I just want you to simply understand what a simple mutation is, a simple gene is, and a simple pair of chromosomes. It's very important that you understand this because this is where leopard gecko genetics spring forth from. This is the foundational principle of how to breed leopard geckos, how to attain certain looks. And if you don't understand this, you are going to be confused in your head over how to achieve a certain look in leopard geckos if that is the look that you're going for or how to understand the other terms, the other genetic terms right here that we are going to study in leopard geckos in the next video. So I think I covered everything in this video about chromosomes and what is a chromosome to test and see if you understood what chromosomes and leopard geckos actually are. Rewatch this video back or just try to recall from memory right now everything that I've covered and describe for me in your own terms what is a chromosome in leopard gecko DNA? What does it contain? And what causes for variations in the way that a gecko looks? In a comment below. I would love to see your guys' answers and it'll be a little bit of a test for you guys. Feel free to rewatch this video before you make that comment and I will certainly be commenting on and liking all the comments below and I'm interested to see who may have the best recollection or recall of what a chromosome is from this video. So thank you guys so much. We are dropping new videos now every Monday morning and so I will see you back here next Monday morning, if not before then in one of our live streams or interview events. Keep an eye out for this Wednesday. We are also adding new geckos to the website every Wednesday now as well. And every Friday, if you miss this live stream, it is our Hangout Fridays. So you can come in, I'll invite you live into the live stream and you can ask your questions or promote your brand or what, talk geckos, whatever the case is. We do encourage questions though, because we want to create a good video for people to watch back on different topics that people might have questions on. Last week, we had some great questions come through. So if you missed that, I'll show that here in the top right corner. You could watch those conversations that took place and I'm almost certain you will learn something. So until next time, my friends, stay safe, pursue your reptile passion and have a geeky gecko. Great day. Peace.